So thank you in advance for watching this video. I wanted to do these videos to highlight the nuanced and daily struggles that black Americans go through and experience and that have been ingrained in their culture and ingrained in their history, whether they experience them personally or not. Um, is something that we're all familiar with and something that we, things that we struggle with. Um, and today, um, as mentioned in my previous post, I'm discussing hair. Like my hair, but also black women's hair and the history of that in the United States. It's not gonna be a history lesson. Like there are plenty of resources and articles and films and documentaries about black women's hair, but um, I really just wanted to share my story. Um, not even two years ago, I was sitting in my apartment in Berlin and I washed my hair. I thought about wearing it natural, but I stood in the mirror and I just looked at myself and I started screaming and crying. I was so angry. Like I was angry that I didn't have these good curls. I was angry that my hair was difficult to style. I was sad. I felt ugly. I didn't think that I would be able to leave my house without doing anything to my hair. I would have to twist it back. I would have to put it in a bun. Um, I would have to do some two strand twists to make the curls look um, more beautiful, more defined. Um, just washing my hair and go, like, I've never been able to do that. If you've never taken a look in the mirror at your own natural hair and never had anyone suggest that you change the way that your natural hair comes out of your head. It, it, I don't know what, what it feels like. It has to be an amazing feeling to just have your hair grow naturally and not feel self-conscious about the way that your hair comes out of your head. Um, words used to describe uh, women's natural hair, unkept, nappy, um, difficult, um, all of the words used to describe um, natural women's hair um, in a negative way were used to deter them from wearing their hair just the way that it came out of their scalp. Um, ever since I could remember, my mom put relaxers in my hair, chemical relaxers. Um, so there are chemical relaxers actually targeted to children. Um, it's called Just For Me. Uh, if you uh, have ever heard the commercials you're probably singing it in your head right now um, these relaxers are chemicals that um, women of color black women put on their hair to chemically straighten it for about two to three months and then you have to keep doing this to touch up your roots um, it's not recommended for children under the age of 12 but children as young as two um, have been known to get these relaxers they cause burning of the scalp they cause hair loss um, but they also cause some more severe side effects um, I actually had eczema during the time that I was getting relaxers and I, I, I didn't know why um, and as soon as I stopped putting relaxers on my hair then the eczema went away um, it can also cause respiratory issues certain types of cancer so it's a really terrible product but black women have been doing this in an effort to essentially uh, assimilate to white western standards of beauty the chemical relaxer was actually created by accident uh, by garrett augustus morgan in the early 1900s so he created this chemical to um, ease the friction in his sewing machines and he experimented on his own hair and realized that they actually straightened the hair. And so in the, since the early 1900s, these chemical relaxers have been on the market. They've made immense amounts of money. Um, all I remember seeing is these smiling faces with this straight flowing hair on the, the front of these boxes. And a lot of the ads for these chemical relaxers, it was all about beauty. like. This is what you need to look beautiful, right? Your natural hair needs to be straight and you need to assimilate, you need to conform to white Western standards of beauty in order to be seen as beautiful. In the 1960s, there was a natural hair movement uh, surrounding the Black Panther movement. 
a lot of women and men as well wore their natural hair, essentially um, distancing themselves from this white, centralized um, standard of beauty. Um, unfortunately, women having afros was used to target them. Um, it was used as a cause to arrest them, to harass them on the streets, um, to question them about their involvement in the Black Panther movement. Um, Angela Davis wrote about her experience, so her face with her beautiful afro was plastered all over FBI offices across the country um, as she was on one of their wanted lists. And so this black woman with an afro became a symbol of the Black Panther movement. She said hundreds, if not thousands of women across the country were accosted by police, targeted because they were wearing their afros. So in the 70s, black women started wearing wigs to cover their natural hair. And then in the 80s, along with the Jericho movement, along with people being targeted for wearing um, natural hairstyles, they also were not welcome in workplaces. So this completely killed um, the natural uh, hair care movement. It, it killed this pride and this embracing of uh, natural hair. Again, um, systematically targeting people. Just their hair grows this way out of their head, and yet we're going to discriminate against them in the workplace. So. After that, there was a, a rise in the 2000s about um, wearing your hair natural, um, but this natural hair care movement failed um, because it wasn't actually about embracing the way your hair naturally comes out of your head. It was all about stretching your curls. So even these hair companies that were um, supposed to be natural hair care companies they the, most of their products were stretching creams their ads had women with these loose curls these more manageable curls like if you look at uh, Lupita Nyong'o her afro was not commonly seen in, in beauty ads or even uh, as a and a desired result in these natural hair care lines. There were so many tutorials about how to stretch your curls. Uh, women were doing two strand twists to stretch their curls. Um, they were using these curl stretching products. So it still was not about like, hey, your hair grows this way and this is beautiful and this is the way that your hair should be. Um, still, this natural hair care movement was about modifying in a, a way your natural hair now i personally um i still have not learned to embrace my my natural hair as i stated in the caption of my photo i stopped relaxing my hair in i think the late 2000s not because I was on the natural hair care movement, but because I wanted to color my hair. And so I had to choose whether I was going to kill my hair with uh, chemical relaxers or, or I was going to kill my hair with hair dye, but I couldn't do both. Like it's so damaging to your hair, this process of, of relaxers, that you, you can't add color on top of that unless you want to be bald. Like if you're just trying to go the long route to be bald, then you can do both. So. I stopped using chemical relaxers so that I could start coloring my hair, but I still straightened it. So either um, I straightened it with a flat iron, um, which is also the heat, the level of heat that you use on your hair to straighten it, um, especially if you live somewhere where it's humid, you have to straighten your hair constantly. Um, that's extremely damaging to your hair. Or I used uh, weaves, which were generally straight, or I would wear braids. Even now, like I'm in my mid 30s, and I still have not learned to embrace my natural hair. And it's a process. It's like years and years of being inundated with imagery 
because it doesn't look like your natural hair. It doesn't reflect that your natural hair is beautiful. Um, it's all about modifying the way that your hair grows out of your head in order to seem desirable, in order to be seen as beautiful. And it's not like overnight, I'm just gonna say, okay, well now I'm embracing my natural hair and I'm just gonna rock it this way and feel beautiful. Like, it doesn't matter how many compliments people give me on my natural hair. Um, it's just something that I battle with and something that really is like traumatizing. And it's, it's insane to think of the trauma inflicted on, on black people, on people of color for their natural features. And, and this has been happening in the United States for centuries. <laughs> it's uh, used as a tactic to uh, essentially centralize white beauty, right? Like lighter skin complexion, um, straighter hair textures, certain facial features. Like this was the standard of beauty that black women saw for so long and it sticks with you and it's really hard to get rid of so I, I I don't know what it's like to be the standard of beauty um, but I, I, I think this is just another small way that there's this uh, generational and personal trauma that that black people are carrying with them that many people don't have to deal with and they don't even think about, they don't even consider. Um, I've had so many women, white women, or uh, in my previous job, Italian, like they would touch my hair. I would change my hairstyle like sometimes pretty often. And there would be so many questions. How did you get your hair to do that? Wasn't your hair just different last week? Like I didn't even recognize you. Like oh my god like how does this work like I'm a science project or I'm some sort of like animal in a in a zoo that you are observing and trying to figure out and it's it's exhausting like I know that a lot of people think it's harmless like oh I'm just curious like I just want to know how your hair does this I want to know like more about your black natural hair but don't touch our hair. Don't make excuses for touching our hair. There is no excuse. Um, I don't care how well you know a person, like don't go up to someone and touch their hair. Like unless you have discussed this previously, just don't. And don't argue with us about how it wasn't your intention to be uh, offensive. Just don't do it. And if you're confused about someone's natural hairstyles, just Google it. Like there's so much information and we're not uh, to be observed. We're not to be uh, poked and prodded. So I think we have a lot that we're dealing with internally that we carry with us and that a lot of people don't take into consideration. Hopefully after watching this video, you will just be more mindful, have a little bit more understanding. All right, thank you for watching and let's see what's gonna be next time.